Happy holidays, everyone. David Gray here, and this is one of my first videos that I'm going to try to provide all of you information about the industry and prosthetics and orthotics and robotics, and just try to kind of give you some input on some of the things that I do. Now, if this is your first time watching my videos, let me introduce myself. I'm a prosthetist here in Boston. Now, what is a prosthetist? Uh, depends on who you ask. If you were to ask any of my friends, they would say, Hey, fellas, look what I found in my pocket. If you were to ask him my ask my mom, she would think the only thing that stands between life and death in an OR are these. If you were to ask society, they think I built. Oh what I actually do is I rebuild artificial limbs for amputees, and I help people regain their independence. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about a new procedure that is changing the way of traditional prosthetics and actually allowing patients to control prosthetics using their brain and to regain their function. Now to start off with amputations, uh, let me just give you a little bit of information about that because when it comes to amputations, doctors are really not considering patients regaining their functionality. Their whole, they're more motivated to saving that person's life and trying to, than trying to salvage the limb to regain that function. So because of that, uh, for hundreds of years, every amputation has happened, has you know, made it a little bit harder for someone who's motivated to get back to work or someone who wants to start walking again or someone who just wants to get back to their everyday activities to actually do it. I've tried to build some of the best prosthetics in the world, but depending on the patient and the amputation and the condition, it, it, you never really know what you're going to get into until it's a more of a trial and error. But this procedure that we're going to talk about actually takes that into consideration. The doctor looks at the patient's limb and tries to salvage their muscle and their nerves and everything like that to prepare them to use this new bio leg that's uh, being developed by MIT here in Boston. Because today's prosthetics is kind of spring-based and when, it, when someone walks and when they try to do activities and they move their leg, they don't quite know where their leg is without looking down at it. But in this one, because they'll be able to feel a lot of the muscle that they're using, they will know where their leg is in space and make it a lot easier for them to walk. The doctor who developed this procedure is Dr. Matthew Carty. He is at Brigham uh, Women's and Children's Hospital here in Boston. And he partnered with people out in MIT in order to not only help with this amputation procedure, but also the people at MIT is creating something called a bionic leg. Now, what is this procedure called? First, I need to tell you about who this procedure is named after. If you haven't heard of the name Jim Ewing, you need to Google that right now. Jim Ewing is a guy who on vacation fell and injured and fractured his leg, bruised his lung, and just completely um, and after that, it took him a long road to try to regain his function, which he did. But unfortunately, when he was regaining his function, he had to deal with a lot of pain. And he actually elected to have his leg amputated. So he doesn't have to deal with the pain anymore. Now, that is a very hard thing to do. I can't even imagine what it would take for someone to make that decision, but he had to make the best decision for himself. He met Dr. Matthew Cardi, and they talked about this new experimental, this new, he met Dr. Matthew Cardi, and they talked about this new experimental procedure or amputation that actually should help him regain his function. And of course, this procedure is called the Ewing amputation. It is named after Jim Ewing because it was performed here in Boston in 2016. As of today, there's been over 20 people who's gone through this experimental amputation and who has success successfully, um, who has successfully maintained their muscle, uh, muscles, muscles. The hell am I saying right now? Mus muscles? Who are maintaining their muscles and, and their nerves to control the function of this prosthesis. And I uh, what's exciting about this is this allows me and any prosthetist in this field 
to change and develop new prosthetics that helps people walk better. I mean, I, I think that's really, really cool. When an amputation is being performed, usually the limb is just cut. It's just cut, the muscles folded over, and then the skin is folded over so they can suture it and salvage that limb. But in this procedure, they actually connect two, uh, two muscles on your leg that actually uh, work to counteract each other. Just like when you bend your foot up, the muscles in the front of your leg contract and the muscles in the back of your leg and your calf actually stretch. And then when you push your foot down, it's the exact opposite. The muscles on the front of your leg stretch while the muscles in the back of your leg contract. So what they do is when they do this procedure, they actually connect those two muscles together. So that way when one is being contracted and pulled, the other is being stretched. So they're actually mimicking how those muscles work while doing the amputation and planning for that to happen. Now, as long as the muscles are, are countering each other and working together, those nerve endings will be able to fire and you'll be able to feel it in your brain and then those firing nerves are being controlled by the prosthetic leg. And if the leg can be controlled, then the person using it will be able to walk better. So as I mentioned earlier, the first time this procedure was done was in 2016. And as of today, there's been over 20 people who have successfully gone through this amputation. I read in this article that I'm gonna put below for you guys to read just in case you wanna learn all about it. Um, that as of November 2019, they're actually taking this procedure and applying it to upper extremity prosthetics. So people who have lost their arms and uh, lost any part of their upper extremity, when you're rebuilding a prosthesis, they'll be able to control it with their mind. Stuff that I've read in the past, in order to control a prosthesis, they were talking about these surgical interventions where they had to put these microchips in your brain. Now, in the world that we live in and after Snowden and all these things, I don't want anybody putting any microchips in my brain or anybody else's brain in my family. But if this is something that by using the muscles that you already have, whether it's in your upper arms or in your legs or anything like that, to actually control the prosthesis just by thinking about it, that's far in advance a better way in my opinion. It's less evasive and you don't really don't have to worry about any kind of crazy brain surgery. And I'm not even going to imagine how much that costs uh, people to go through, to even think about going through a brain surgery. I mean, it was probably expensive as shit. Like the Ewing amputation, the upper extremity procedure is gonna use two counteracting muscles to try to control the function of a prosthesis. So that is something I really wanna see and I really wanna work with and I try to reach out to this doctor and just see exactly how I can contribute to any of these procedures because Though I'm a prosthetist and I'm not involved in that, I'm still trying to make a difference in this world. And the best thing I can do is try to educate myself and then pass this education to all of you guys, of course. One of the things I wanna kinda of tell you guys is if this is very interesting to you or if you know someone who could benefit from this, Dr. Carter, MIT, with a partnership with Walter Reed, Army, military, veterans. If you got a veteran in your life, you got someone who has served and someone who you feel that will benefit from this, I'm going to post a link down below in the article because they're actually recruiting people at this time to see if they will benefit from this procedure. So you can really contact them yourselves. You can find out if it's something that you can benefit from and it's something that will prepare you for the next level of prosthetics that's coming down the line. I'm gonna keep my eye out on this procedure. I'm gonna do my best to try to work with it. And this technology and this field is starting to expand beyond what I really in, in thought it could be. We are going far in a way advanced to improving people's lives and I just wanna see how I can help and make a difference in this world. Hey, if you like what I'm talking about in this video, you wanna see more in the world of prosthetics and orthotics, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and that like, that helps support this page and allow for me to keep bringing this information to you guys and tell you all about this industry and the things that I'm delving into a little bit more. But thank you once again for watching and be sure to tune back in when I post more videos.